Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It is good to have each of you here this morning gathered together on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, in the way of announcements, um, a few things I will share with us. Uh, our missions offering for 2022 is off to a great start. We had about 30 people here in attendance for the Love Feast on Wednesday night, and we collected $1,191 toward our goal. Uh, so we're off to a, a good start, and please remember that that emphasis continues throughout the year that you can give uh, to that fund any time that you wish. Uh, keep in mind that Youth Bible Study is now on Sunday nights at 5 o'clock here at the church. If you are youth-aged or have someone youth-aged in your family, uh, please encourage them to attend. Also remember our Wednesday night schedule with handbells at 5, church conference at 5.30, adult Bible study 6 to 6.30, and kids choir and Bible study from 6 to 6.45, and of course supper and choir as well. Uh, please make sure to remember to sign up for supper if you plan on being here. Again, I am glad that you have joined us this morning, and now may we worship together. As we open our worship service, please stand as we sing together, Open Our Eyes. Good morning. So today we're going to talk about rules. What are some rules y'all have to follow? Mm -hmm. Right. Y'all think of other rules y'all have to live by? Yeah. So we have lots of rules we have to live by. If you had to come up with the number one rule for y'all to live by, what would it be? Yeah, that one's a tough one. So we're going to talk about a number one rule that Jesus told us. And he told us that we are to love one another. And that means even loving people who maybe aren't the nicest to us. And that's kind of tough, isn't it? Yeah. Um, some people might call this the golden rule, but Jesus said that loving others, even people we don't get along with, are really important, So, and that we should treat others the way we want to be treated. Like if 
Jesus, if we're to love them and be kind to them, right? So this week, what I want y'all to do is I want y'all to practice this. Even if someone isn't the nicest to you, um, maybe someone pushed you on the playground or did something not so nice, um, to look. Yeah, to love them, to be kind to them, even um, even if it's hard. Because you can be kind all the time, okay? Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for this day. Please help us to treat others with love, just as Jesus would want us to. In your name we pray, amen. Our offertory hymn is hymn number 383, Near to the Heart of God. that you bless us as, as we hear our word today, your word, and, and it's so meaningful to us, and, and we love John Paul for, for his version of, of the, the God's word. We ask that you give us uh, continued help, always allowing us to hear your word and to come each week and hear what you would like to have us hear. We ask that you bless the, the money that is about to be given, that it will be used to your kingdom and to spreading your gospel. We ask these things in thy name. Amen. <laughs>
Please stand for the doxology. <laughs>
Our scripture for this morning comes from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 6, verses 17 through 26. He came down with them and stood on a level place. With a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon, they had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. As a kid, one of my favorite book series was The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. And if you're unfamiliar with the series, it follows the adventures of the Pevensey children in the mythical land of Narnia. And in one of the books, and I can't remember where it comes in the order, but it's Prince Caspian, the, the children return to Narnia after being away for a year in their time, only to find out that something like 1,300 years has passed in Narnia time. And the world there is embroiled in war. Things are in shambles. So the kids joined up with the prince to help bring about peace to the land of Narnia. And along their adventure, they find themselves living in the wilderness. And one of Lucy's dreams, she's one of the children, is recounted like this. It says, Lucy woke out of the deepest sleep you can imagine with the feeling that the voice she liked best in the world had been calling her name. She thought at first that it was her father's voice, but that did not seem quite right. Then she thought it was her brother Peter's voice, but that did not seem to fit either. She did not want to get up, not because she was still tired. On the contrary, she was wonderfully rested and all the aches had gone from her bones. But because she felt so extremely happy and comfortable. That scene captures an important moment. A moment when Lucy hears a voice that she loves and knows instinctively loves her. Think about those voices in your life. The voices of those that love you the voices of those that you love. How does it feel when you hear those voices? It fills you with hope. It gives you a sense that everything is okay. Like no matter what is going on with the world, as long as you can hear that voice, you're whole. It's a voice that is life-giving. And that's what God's voice is like. It gives us life. It makes us whole. No matter how broken we may feel, it brings us healing when we are hurting. 
God's voice gives us what we need to live, to be alive. And that's why people were so drawn to Jesus. The people came to Jesus so they could hear and be healed. They knew that some way, somehow, listening to this voice was healing. And people came from all over with their sickness, with their unclean spirits, with their general brokenness. They all came with some kind of need to this voice that drew them in. They wanted to hear this voice that they knew some way, somehow could bring them life, could bring them healing. They knew that if they listened, they could find healing for their body, their mind, their soul. Because they're all unwell in some way. And they needed relief. They needed affirmation. They needed to know that they had worth and intrinsic value. And they found all of this in Jesus. As they sat and listened to Him. As they crowded in just to get a glimpse of Him and maybe touch Him. They knew that the power of God was in this man. And he healed all of them. All of them made whole in the power of God through Jesus Christ. There's a number of ways that we can approach this episode from Scripture. Jesus' healing of the crowds and the, the Beatitudes that follows. One way that we can approach it is we can just simply spiritualize Jesus' words here. We can spiritualize them to the point that they have no real impact on how we live in this world. We can spiritualize them to the point that we hear no call to be agents of any kind of healing in our world. And view everything as a metaphor and say that Jesus is only capable of saving our souls not offering any kind of hope or healing for the problems of life. And that viewpoint often leads to shunning the world that we live in in anticipation of heaven. Where everything is spiritual and nothing is physical. Conversely, you can go the other way with this text. You can take Jesus' words and go the opposite direction proclaiming that in order to follow Jesus' teachings, we do have to care for the poor, we do have to care for the broken and the suffering, and, and those are the ways that we find this healing that Jesus promises. But focusing only on that leaves spirituality and faith in the back seat. But that approach doesn't work either because Jesus also called us to this deep, abiding spirituality, this deep-rooted faith in our lives. So listening brings about healing, but it does more so than simply spiritually. It does more so than simply physically. So then that leaves us with a third option, an integrated option that is more encompassing of all that Jesus truly has to say and all that Jesus calls us to listen to. Christ preached and lived out that God's kingdom is about what's going on in the world around us. Jesus made it clear that caring for the struggling, helping those who need help is important. It's an important part of being a disciple. But he also showed us that a living faith trust in God, believes in God, and follows the leading of God's Spirit, that it is in the soul as well. Jesus believed and preached and lived a life that was set in the here and now and in eternity. The kingdom of God, as Jesus proclaimed it, shows a continuity between now and all of history. So Jesus' words that we are called to listen to are both about having our souls healed and getting to heaven, 
but it's also about the potential for healing in the world in which we live so that we might join with Christ in bringing the fullness of God to life right around us. To listen is to be healed and to become an agent of healing. To be acutely aware of God's presence while fulfilling God's purposes. If we can do this and avoid one extreme or the other over spiritualization or over emphasis on non-spiritual things, then we go a long way toward becoming the disciples that Christ calls us to be. But therein lies another challenge. The fourth way, the one that's honestly the easiest one to take if we're not careful, which is to ignore all of it. To ignore God's call altogether and simply not listen and do what we want to when we want to do it and not care. But that doesn't work either. Extremes don't work and neither is doing So God's call then is to listen so that ourselves and all those that we work with, live around, enjoy each other's company, all those that we encounter will know the benefit of a relationship with Christ. We'll know the compassionate way of being that Jesus calls us to while also celebrating potential of a future with Christ in eternity. So what choice then do we make when it comes to listening to Jesus? Do we choose only healing for ourselves or healing for others or healing for all or simply not caring one way or the other? Will we make Jesus a good man, a good teacher who simply tells us to be good people? Or will we make Jesus the Savior who died on a cross for our sins and think that that absolves us from any other kind of responsibility? Will we make Jesus an excuse to be exclusionary and stick to our own or a reason to engage others? Hopefully, we listen to Jesus And see that he is the one who connects us to God. That he is the one who is the source of life of all that is beautiful and good and true. That Jesus is the source of hope and healing daily and for all eternity. And God's way, Jesus' way is the only way we can ever really move closer to any kind of healing for our world. Both its physical and spiritual problems then when we make the choice every day to know that Jesus cares about it all, it's the only way that we find healing from our sin and the brokenness of life. As I was thinking about this sermon this week and We had the torrential downpouring rain that we had, and I think more is on the way if you trust the weatherman. But it got me thinking, and it took me a minute to find it, but it got me thinking about Psalm 107. And in Psalm 107, it compares God's healing to a barren wilderness that is transformed into pools of water. Because the kind of storm that can transform a desert into an oasis isn't a gentle shower. It's an absolute downpour, flooding every crack in the parched ground. It pours down. It fills up everywhere that it can. There are places where the water will go that you didn't even realize water could go there. And it brings 
new life. If you have time after church today, Google desert before and after rain and look at the pictures and see how much green and flowers are possible even in a barren place after rain. But I thought about that. And I thought about that comparison to God's healing. And isn't that exactly the kind of life that Jesus is proclaiming for us here? Isn't that the kind of healing that we desire a healing that is all-encompassing. That when our own stories feel like we're just aimlessly wandering through life and we're thirsty and don't know what, and we need a healing that we may not even know we need, Jesus can pour that out on us. Or when we look around at the world around us and we see others who were parched and dried out from the challenges of life, and we don't see any beauty or goodness in the world, and we desperately want it to bloom and be healed, that's exactly the kind of healing that Jesus says is possible. It's a healing that we can be drenched in ourselves if we will listen to Jesus. But not only that, it is a healing that will overflow so much so that we can share it with others and be those agents of healing in the world. So then our challenge is it was for Jesus' followers gathered around him that day is to listen in a way that deeply challenges us, transforms us, and brings us our own healing. And to listen in a way that makes us deeply aware of God's presence all around us and of our own purpose in the kingdom of God. May we heed God's call to let healing rain down and flood our world with the goodness of God. May it be so. Amen. Our hymn for response, No, Not Despairingly. Please stand.
For our benediction this morning, I offer a few selections from Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble. For he turns rivers into desert, springs of water into thirsty ground. For the land that is a waste he makes fruitful. He turns parched land into springs. He lets the hungry live and the thirsty drink. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen.